The sleepy bohemian town of Chaslova is not a place that one would associate with the fast lane. But that's exactly where one would find their most famous resident. Yarmila Katochvilova is Czechoslovakia's greatest female runner. A double world champion, she also set two world records, one of which still stands today some 12 years after she set it. She's now 44 and runs an athletic training program, which specializes, as she did, in the 400 and 800 meters. I've worked and trained here in Cheslava all my life. Today we have two female European junior champions, plus athletes who've participated in this year's world championships. The track season may have come to an end, but for those committed to producing the next wave of champions, pupils from the local junior school still have to be put through their paces. For regular students starting their winter training, the presence of Kratochvilova is a great boost. Yarmila is absolutely fabulous. I am pleased that I'm with her, as I would not want another trainer. I train with her because I think she's the best trainer in the Czech Republic and because of her achievements at world level. I think that she's among the best trainers in the world, and that's why I came here to work with her. I think she'll help me be a success. Everyone's dream is to emulate Kratochvilova, who set 24 Czech records over four distances ranging from 100 to 800 meters. And unlike other Eastern European athletes, Kratochvilova did not have the help of a state-run production line to develop her talent. I started athletics at a time when there were no sports schools or sports classes. All this happened in Czechoslovakia later. I came from a non-sport family, so there was nobody to force me or to encourage me to participate in something as pleasurable as athletics. It didn't turn out to be so pleasurable for the self-confessed country girl. Coach Miroslav Kasici's punishing schedule meant that she trained seven hours a day, committing her life totally to the cause. Family life and holidays, even Christmas, were out of the question. It helped her to dominate the domestic scene, and she finally made a belated breakthrough onto the international tracks at the age of 30. But with one of the greatest 400-meter runners of all time, East Germany's Merita Koch, blocking her path, the prospect of success seemed far away. At the beginning, I never thought of it because Marita's running time seemed to me almost like a small miracle. I could not imagine that a woman could run the 400 meters so fast. So I more or less just watched her from a distance. And I was almost too frightened to get near her because I convinced myself that she was such a great competitor. Koch's dominance was such that nobody could get within half a second of her over 400 meters. In all, the East German won 26 major titles and claimed 16 world records. From 1977 until 1980, she was invincible. In the Olympic 400 meters final in Moscow, Kratochvilova didn't exactly breathe down her neck, but it did signal a personal breakthrough for the Czech as she claimed her first major championship medal. She just held off another East German, Christine bremer latan for silver. She was now the second best 400 meter runner in the world. As her confidence grew, she was able to put an end to her great rival's winning streak. Right up to the World Cup in Rome when I won, I only then managed to understand that even this great competitor could be overcome. And also later, when I broke the world record, I still said Marita is the best. And thanks to her, I gained the motivation to work hard. Kratochvilova continued to push her body to the limits in training, determined to consolidate her victory over the German. All manner of techniques were employed to get her into the best possible condition for the 1983 World Championships to be held in Finland. She also stepped up to 800 meters to give her more stamina in the 400. 
Remarkably, over the longer distance at a meet in Munich, she ran away from a top-class field to break the world record by 15 hundredths of a second. One month later, the inaugural World Championships were held in Helsinki. The event's timetable allowed Kretov Fileva to compete at both distances, although it was far from easy. Just 35 minutes after winning the 400-meter semi, she took part in the 800-meter final. The Soviets supplied the main threat, with Lyubov Gorina pushing Kretov Fileva all the way. She sprinted clear down the home straight to take the 800-meter title in yet another awesome display of controlled running. Koch had committed herself to running in the shorter sprints, and so it was left to Yarmila's compatriot Tatiana Kotsembova to challenge her in the 400-meter final the next day. If Kretov Vilova could win, then she would join the great Cuban runner Alberto Juan Torena in the record books as the only athlete to win both 400 and 800 golds in a major championships. Although Kotsembova battled gamely, she was no Marita Koch, and Kretov Vilova cruised to the title. She also claimed her second world record in two weeks, becoming the first woman to break the magical 48 second barrier. I had never stood on the highest step at the big meets because Marita Koch always won. So they always played the anthem of the old GDR. I always stood on the bottom step, so I was very motivated. I wanted to stand on the highest step to hear our anthem. So with three medals from the world championships and one world record, I couldn't have asked for more. After two recitals in Helsinki, the Czech anthem was not played for Jomina at the Los Angeles Olympics because of the Soviet-led boycott. Aged 33 and with Seoul another four years away, her last chance to win Olympic gold had gone. Kratochvilova retired to take up coaching and continues to work hard to find a worthy successor to her crown. But political change in her homeland has turned sport upside down. Funding is a constant headache. At this year's Indoor World Championships, her protégé, teenage 400-meter runner Hanna Bedesova, did compete. And while she remains optimistic, every day Kratoshvilova realizes just how hard an act she is to follow. I am trying to make Bedesova into a new Kratoshvilova. Of course, I know that the competitors who train are young and that times are different now and not so suited to a life of training as they were for us. It seems almost that there is too much democracy for some and it stops them training with the right amount of dedication and that is what a great runner requires.